I'm Liam Randall and today we're going to review detecting expired SSL certificates using Bro IDS. For more information about today's demonstration, please see the following resources. We begin this week's demonstration with a question. Still catching up from a hectic few weeks, I was listening to my favorite patio cast this week and surprised to hear Bro mentioned. Over on Compute Cycle, Brett Thorson asks, can Bro IDS tell me when my SSL certificates are about to expire? We'll revisit the why in a few minutes, but the short answer is, it already does. The too long didn't read is simply this. Add the following two lines to the end of your local.bro file. Load the expiring-certs.bro script, and then simply specify which search you would like checked, where all hosts is one of the following, the default of localhost only, remote hosts only, all hosts, or no hosts. Whether you realize it or not, SSL TLS is used all over your network. Beyond simple web browsing, our problematic global certificate infrastructure is one of the core building blocks of the internet. Mail, VPN, SIP, it's even beyond that, as many cases of the simple cloud-based services like storage, database, and provisioning are often implemented and accessed over HTTP. And when there are problems in this infrastructure, how these services fail must be examined on a case-by-case -case basis. And as you'll see in a minute, sometimes they fail in dramatic and spectacularly expensive ways. First, a quick demonstration. We could simply load the appropriate script into our local.bro, at the end of our local.bro, configure which certificates we want to check, ask bro to confirm our configuration is correct, ask bro to install the current configuration, and then tell Bro to restart using the new configuration. I'm trying to make this blog as informative and helpful as possible. So today I'll show you another way, how to run Bro from the command line. Running Bro from the command line is helpful and I think it's how most Bro developers iteratively test out their code. You can see all the options with dash H, however in this case what we're doing is we're telling Bro to use its current configuration and then dash R, read in the specific PCAP, and then load the following two bro scripts in order. The first script is simply a copy of the expiring dash cert bro script included in the default build of bro 2.1. The second script only contains one line, the redefinition of the SSL notify underscore certs underscore expiration variable specified above. Let's take a quick look. Here I have a PCAP of an SSL certificate that's about to expire. Let's go ahead and tell Bro to read in this PCAP with the two configuration settings that we just discussed. You can see that Bro has created a couple logs. Here we have our underlying connection log, which is a record of all the TCP communications. We have our SSL log, which is a log of all the SSL transactions. And we have our notice log, which are the things that Bro has flagged that we should probably know about. Let's start at the bottom of the stack. You can see that Bro's dynamic protocol detection automatically picked out the type of the connection and logged it in here, along with some other relevant details. Drilling down a little bit further, let's take a look at the SSL log. Here you can see details about the certificates used, the ports they were on, the Taking a look at the notice log, you can see that Bro has helpfully flagged for us the fact that this SSL certificate will be expiring soon. Easy, right? Back to the real world. The question put to us by ComputeCycle was in response to the complete and total failure in Microsoft Azure Cloud Services. The reason for the failure? You guessed it, an expired SSL certificate. If you're not familiar with Cloud Services, let's take a quick look at how they work. Microsoft spends $15 billion with a B dollars building a world-class, reliable, and redundant infrastructure, the cloud. There are two other players in the cloud game, the clients and the partners. The partners are those people that build applications in the cloud that they can then in turn sell to the clients. Now sometimes the clients are consuming services directly out of the cloud. For example, in the case of Microsoft's own Xbox service, 
but for the purposes of today's accounting, let's just consider them another cloud partner. Now these three players, Windows Azure, the cloud, the partner, and the client are all connected via the internet, and many, if not most, of these communications are secured by SSL TLS certificates. On Friday, February the 23rd, 2013, we found out exactly what happens to Windows Azure when the certificates expire. Absolute pandemonium. I think what shocks me most about this situation is the complete failure of both Microsoft and all of the partners building their infrastructure in the cloud to monitor the situation more closely. Here you have investors, boards, executives, technicians, auditors, policies, procedures, frameworks, all of it for naught. As Microsoft runs their own CA, this wasn't even the case of a lack of a $70 certificate. Now, I don't have any information on this, but I try to imagine how this happens. I like to think that there was some guy with a spreadsheet, and I'm concerned that something may have happened to him. I mean, is he okay? Is he sick? I'm clearly exaggerating for effect, but I hope you can see my larger point. And here is where I hope to really connect the rubber to the road. You see, partners make their living operating services in the cloud. Clients pay for these services in the form of cash or time in consuming advertisements, and Microsoft endeavors to make stacks of fat cash operating the cloud itself. Now, when service level agreements or SLAs are violated, there are sometimes real financial penalties. And in this case, Microsoft immediately announced credits for their customers. Let's just consider a couple of the financial impacts that occurred. Microsoft loses revenue and partners receive credits. Partners may have lost revenue. Clients could not access their services. I don't know, however, in this case, I hope that the impacts were merely an inconvenience to all involved. Some clients couldn't play with their Xboxes, a partner's app was down, and so forth. However, I think we can all imagine cases where an interruption of this magnitude could have far more serious consequences. Maybe health records were not available in an emergency. Perhaps there was an interruption to an online security service. Errors in information technology have a tendency to have a lot of unintended consequences. For those naysayers wondering how much of a problem this really is, let me just add that Microsoft Azure had a similar interruption due to problems with their SSL infrastructure last year, which resulted in, you guessed it, financial consequences. Have these errors risen to the level of direct itemization of Microsoft filings with the SEC? I have no idea, but the reputational cost alone is simply enormous. And don't let my hokey graphics mislead you. I'm sure that at least some partners lost more revenue than they received in credits under their SLA. Now, since I originally completed this presentation, the Microsoft Azure team has posted their post-mortem on the incident. My TLDR on it is essentially this. Their backend tool said one thing, and reality said another. To me, this is just another tragic example illustrating the need of a passive reality-based tap for both the Microsoft infrastructure and the partners building their livelihood in the cloud. Under its watchful eye, Bro understands all the TCP IP and would have provided an additional control to prevent this error from lapsing into the public. If you've listened through to the end of today's demonstration, I sincerely appreciate your time and hope you found today's presentation to be informative. We began today with a question about expiring SSL certificates. Having made my point, let me end with one. How much will it cost your organization to not run Bro IDS? I'm Liam Randall with BroIDS.org.